Hello. Hi, everybody. I promise I wasn't going to make a toast, and I'm not going to. Just going to do a little freestanding comedy, and if at the end everybody wants to raise their glasses to Pam and Jim, then so be it. Hey, what is the deal with the smart car? How smart is that? Those things are tiny. Can you even drive them in traffic? Uh, I'm so smart. E equals MC squared. I, I drive a smart car. That's not smart in my book. The real smart car is Kit from Knight Rider. Knight Rider. That's a car that can talk. <laughs> can a smart car talk? Nope, no, that's not smart. And also Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Very smart. And you, everybody can laugh. It doesn't have to just be the idiots. TBTL. Uh, what do you want me to do? I don't care. Yeah, get a job. Oh, get a job? Yeah. Just get a job? Why don't I strap on my job helmet and squeeze down into a job cannon and fire off at the job land where jobs grow on jobbies? All right, I'm going to assume that's hypothetical, right? Your hypothetical is kind of tightly constrained, and I doubt whether that kind of thing would ever happen. I'm not going to sit here and juggle hypotheticals that aren't in, aren't in the world. I'm sorry, but when I hear an undeserved compliment, it makes my ears want to throw up. Oh... Your ears are always throwing up about something. All right. Hello. Good morning. And welcome, everyone, to a Wednesday edition of TBTL, the show that just might be too beautiful to live. It's not as sexy as sending astronauts to the moon. My name is Luke Burbank. I am your host. Oh, yeah. Coming to you from the Madrona Hill studio, perched high above the mighty Columbia, where once again, I'm... I've had far too much coffee for the broadcast. Put that coffee down. But um, maybe it'll give me just the energy that we all need for episode 4,156 in a collector series. Let the fun begin. Uh, remember last week we were talking about um, how Wendy's might be surge pricing? And, uh, and of course, because of the day and age we live in, uh, the other fast food companies, where there's a, a constant somatic, somatic, Socratic. There's a constant dialogue, a constant back and forth between the fast food entities uh, now online and places where they all they're all everybody's trolling everyone else. Burger King, Buru Ray has weighed in on memories uh, are made in in your mouth on uh, the uh, Wendy's surge pricing idea, and I think that they may. I think at BK, have it your way, you fool. I think that the CEO of BK may have made a mistake, which we'll talk about. Also, time permitting, uh, we don't have John Sklaroff here, but I think we still might want to do a little uh, TBTB team building where we continue getting to know each other. Yesterday, we got exactly one question in of, I believe it was 150 questions to get to know someone better. Um, so we only have 149 to get through today. And it's going to start as soon as we say hello to this young man, the longest-running Cobro of the show, maybe best known for his depictions of the tall ship. Hey, he's Andrew Walsh, and he's joining me right now. Good morning, Luke. Um, I want to, well, you have a question for me, or yeah. I sound like I'm asking you a question? No, I have a question that will okay, probably yeah. derail things. Am I? Am I? Have I lost my marbles, or did we? Did we play the Friday TBTL sounder on a on a? Are, are, does our Wednesday have a case of the Fridays? I didn't even notice that slipped by me. I don't have this labeled as a Friday. It doesn't intro. have any Friday specific audio. It doesn't. You know, it doesn't have the the usual stuff. But I just yeah. noticed that the acapella folks did the. TBT, like the one that we uh, use on Friday. Uh, and what's amazing is if you had awoken me up from a dead sleep and said, what's different about the the Friday acapella, you know, whatever you want to call it, show yes. announce. I couldn't tell. I could never tell you in a million years. But when I heard it, I was like, wait, I was looking around. I was f trying to find a dinosaur to slide down. I was like, God, this week went fast. It's Friday. Yeah. Let me give a little backstory for folks who either are relatively new listeners or don't pay hmm. just a painful amount of attention to the minutia of this show. But um, for years and years and years... I'm honestly surprised had, that I noticed. 
No, I'm really, this, this is really interesting. So for years and years and years, and even before I was making the intros to the show, we always used this acapella open in that intro. TBTL. And then at some point I started making the intros with the montages and everything, and that went on for years. And then I'm going to say it was around the time, I mean, this is going back probably already 10 years ago, because I think it was maybe around the time we joined American Public Media, in some sort of archive that I do not know where this was, why I had access to it, I discovered something that I didn't know existed. You knew it existed, and it was a different version of those same singers doing uh, a TBTL flourish. Jingle. TBTL. Now, of course, this was recorded in the Cairo studios, correct? Yeah. I can't even remember the name of those acapella folks, but we had them in. I mean, we had a lot of time to fill. Yeah, sure. We had them in. I believe they performed, you know, maybe they performed a song or they just talked about what it's like to do acapella. And then uh, I'm going to give credit to Jen, probably. Somebody had the bright idea. Why don't we have them rip off a few, rip through a few jingles where they sing TBTL? And who could have known on that what I assume was probably a dreary Wednesday night or something? All I was thinking was, how soon can I get back to Azteca? <laughs> to Azteca across like, the street. That's the thing that's so weird about this show, um, you know, both in the early days and, and even up till today. Um, you never know when something that is happening is going to become sort of canon, as they say. Right. And and yeah, those that little thing that happened of these of these a cappella singers singing that has become literally a daily experience on the show, and also specifically broken down along. If it's a Friday or if it's one of the other four days of the week, which is something that so this is so again, this was the original as I always knew it. As, but like you said, you or Jen must have had them roll through a couple of different versions. And like I say, I don't know why. What vault I opened, like Geraldo, what Luke, arc and, of what covenant? <laughs> exactly. But suddenly I remember hearing this for the first time again, like ten years ago or something. <laughs> TBTL. And I, I ran to you, Luke, yes, with you my did. eye. I ran to yeah. you, and my eyes were open, and I my I mouth like, was I, I agape. Go, why are you out of breath? Exactly. And I said, because I just went up <laughs> one stair. <laughs> One stair did that to me. Um, and I was like, what is this from? You're like, I, I don't know. I don't even know if you recalled them doing different versions, but I'm like, I I'll tell you what. the Dave Ross show. <laughs> I'm like, I'll mix it into the show from time to time. Mm -hmm. And so that's what happened. I mixed it in randomly maybe for a few weeks. And then at some point, we or I decided, you know what? That will demark a Friday show. And I'm going to give you then, credit for that. And I will also say I, I love that about the show. I love that. Yeah. It's I love little, that for us. It's a small little thing, and then of course we have now we have other things that go into our Friday intros. The uh, anybody know what day it is? It's Friday, Friday. Got to get down on Friday. All of that kind of started to build around that, and now we have a little special Friday vibe, which I like. But I think that this intro that I played today with that clip of tape from the office is so old. Mm. It's from that period of time when I was just messing around by throwing that a cappella version two into an Got intro it. randomly. In fact, this is very uninteresting and that's why I want to leave the show with it mm -hmm. the intro I number every intro that I've made starting with number one when I don't even know if I was a full timer on the show then do you um, remember do we remember can it be um, verified can mm -hmm. you give me the 411, 411 yeah, yeah. Um, on what intro number one actually has in it as the intro tape <sighs> It's I can you I can have look it, it like up. Have I have, yeah, it, right? I, I probably do. Can we try it's to probably guess? pretty rough? No, wait, wait, wait. You're gonna have like, will you have a, a some sort of indication on the file like of what's in there of what the opening tape I is? Might although I didn't start labeling. I think I originally was just labeling them by a number. I'd call it okay. intro dash and a number, and I would email it to you, okay. which is one of the reasons I had to delete tons of old emails. I used to just M I used to just with all the music bed on it, that's like a seven minute file or a six minute file. And I had hundreds of those that I would send to you before every show way back in the day. So I will dial this out. I did want to say though, the thing that might not be interesting to other people, but I will mention is the last new intro that I made was a couple of weeks ago and it was number 920 Whoa. in a collector's series. And this one that I played uh, for you today with the You only have to make like 72 200. more intros to get to, to a get thousand. to the 1K. God, there, do, do you think you'll make 72 more intros in the i do think so i mean yeah. I, that's not a, that's not that's not to i'm not trying to um 
uh, sort of indicate that I have low expectations, but that's actually a lot of interest to me. It really is. And um, the thing is, and it doesn't, it's like one of those things that doesn't account for everything. We would make special ones for when we're live on the air. We'd make special ones for fundraising that sometimes don't get the official numbers. So who knows exactly what the number is? I have intro number one right here, Luke. I can't tell what year it's from, but uh. I do know that this would have been probably. I think this I started making intros for you before I was even a regular voice on the show. I think I was working with you at Cairo. I listened back to some old episodes of TBTL and heard like that used to have more more drops and stuff in the intro. You'd kind of pulled away from that for a while. Then I got really into the Kevin and Bean show mm -hmm. and I got really into Bean's intros with all the tape. And I'm like, hey, if I, I made one for you on spec, as they say, and I emailed it to you and I said, hey, if you ever wanted to use this as an intro and you were like really happy, you were like, because you were doing a lot on your own back then. And you're like, yeah, any of these <laughs> that you want to make going forward, it would be great to spice up the show a bit. And that's probably like 2011 or 2012. And I have one here that is labeled intro number one. Okay. It doesn't describe what it is okay, at good, all. Good. But I will say this. Like, I made some stuff for you that sometimes you – I think you always used them. But there are a few that there's no way we would use mm -hmm. anymore. Like – there are some that are on the edge, and then there are some that went so far over the edge that it <laughs> splatted at the bottom of the ravine. <laughs> I'm thinking and that's of a, where we'll leave it. I'm thinking of one from Archer in particular oh. about a certain robot. I, oh, 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 sure. <laughs> oh, he's not Mr. Roboto. Uh -huh. Let's just say that. Sure. So anyway, wow. um, so well, I don't know what we're going to hear in intro number one okay, here. It's on. not that, to, though. Let me, try to, let me try to guess here. You said this would have been so. Was this the first intro that you think you ever made for the show, or the first yes. intro? Okay, the first one that. And so you said I think me, this is you are I, you are yeah. not yet officially the Cobro of the show. If my re, if the, the version of the story I'm telling you right now, that is that is what I'm saying. I could be misremembering some things, but I'm pretty sure I was a producer who was helping you repackage stuff on weekends for Cairo uh -huh. Radio. I might have been a guest the on remix? the show once or the, twice. <laughs> you and I were working together, but I don't think uh, I was on the show. When you I were made making this. these maybe for the love of the game. For the love of the game. The remix, was that Tori's show? Wasn't that Tori's Well, I think he show? did a version. Yes, I think he had the remix. I, I don't forget what we called, like, the. there was some kind of a TBTL weekend thing, right? It wasn't yeah. called TBTL weekend. And I'd go into the archives of the podcast and, and the old radio show, and I would I would cobble them together yeah. into a radio, uh, radio clock format. But anyway, yeah. I wonder so. if we could get back on... Cairo by way of my brother who's now one of the main voices. I was just Cairo. texting him about Cairo earlier today. <laughs> He's That's like, right. it's wild to me how often my brother David, DFTB, is like... Um, uh, like fills in for Dave Ross. I mean, he's the producer of that morning show, but he does pieces. He fills in when people are. At, I mean, it's like, it's it, there. There must always be a Burbank at Cairo, if possible. Yes, right. Okay. So, so let me. This is. I'm just stalling now because I'm trying to think of what was going on. The I'm going to guess that it's something. It's not a piece of like news tape. Okay. Yes. I don't yeah. know why, but right, I'm just yeah. thinking maybe for your. For your, I, I'm thinking it's something that you saw in a movie or TV show that was kind of f caught your interest. I'm trying to think this would have been you and Veeves would have been on Capitol Hill still, mm -hmm. living in the shadow of the B&O Espresso. Yes, exactly. Mere steps from the last Boston market. <laughs> Although it was already a Starbucks. It had already become a winner. Starbucks, but... Well, I, or a nothing, maybe. Culturally, Starbucks. it's always going to be a uh -huh. Boston market to me. Okay, hold on. Mm -hmm. you're, I'm trying to think. You've got your upstairs writing room where you like to smoke mm -hmm. your cigarettes. Nobody, no, I didn't. No, no you didn't. You I'm sorry. You have your upstairs you? writing room where you would never, where you'd <laughs> sooner die than smoke a cigarette. <laughs> I need to get, I need to physically inhabit uh -huh. your world at this time so I can think, what were you watching? To think like a Walsh, you've got to be a Walsh. You've mm -hmm. got to... You've got to. I'm just trying to think. Think like a wall. I gotta feel be a like Walsh. it's too early for Tim and Eric stuff. And maybe also maybe Tim and Eric. Uh, you and I now have you know in, endlessly discussed those sketches and played them. But maybe at that time that would have been a little avant garde for the time. For like I'm trying to think of the first thing you would send me that you'd be like, okay, this is going to be good for TBTL potentially. It makes me think it would have not been like a bizarro. Tim and Eric sketch. It would have been like a scene from a, a murder she wrote. Mm, I don't think I would have done anything. Columbo, maybe Columbo. I don't think, and I, I'm. 
I'm trying to help you a little bit without like spoiling but, it. Not oh, you that do I know. know. No, you, you do no, know. No, I don't. I don't really know. But I will say that it wouldn't. It wouldn't. These first ones would have been, I think, funny on their face, not sort of just like uh -huh, gotcha. subtly funny. Like I don't think I, I would have thought, like, hey, this bit from Columbo or Murder She Wrote is sort of funny in its earnestness. Right. Like it would have been right, just right, something right, right, that right. was a little bit more. I'm sure it's so you pretty do obvious. know what it is. No, I don't. Oh, I just you know, know it's what not going to be one of the. I know <laughs> what it's not, and I know that. Like I see, like intro number three is the first one that I slugged anything, and I slugged it stupid. And I think some of these early ones had themes, and I think that's. Mm. I was really into like finding like uh -huh. insults like that's I, I cringe to think of this even though my voice isn't on this like even as a producer I cringe about what we're going to hear because I think a lot of the humor I was pulling I was just like and it was more acerbic at the time I feel like you I feel was like, like this is a bad stuff. idea should we have I let us down a, a bad no path? I mean if there's anything bad I mean we're not live if there's anything that I can't stand I by just, I'll, I, all I want to hear is the intro tape I honestly don't yeah. I'm not even that obsessed with the I want to hear up to the TBTL. Okay, well then let's. Uh, okay, if hold that's on, hold the on, case, hold we on, can actually on, click on, through on. a few of these. Hold on, hold on. I just hang on. Wait, hold on. I think I can get here. It's Wait, am I holding on or no? <laughs> oh, here's a mystery for you. Where's intro number five? Why does it go from intro four to intro six, Luke? Oh, Where no. is intro five? Um, okay, intro number one. We, uh, okay, so it's something that's probably. It's probably comic for comic's sake, or what? Like you said, it's self. It, it's sort of self-evident. Um, and so it would have been. I. You know what? I think. Believe it or not, could it be something from the office? Could I it, think it could be something from the office, which is Thirty Rock. I think Thirty Rock which is, is good. Which is ridiculous. Well, not ridiculous, but which is hilarious. If if this whole conversation started today with a with an intro package from the office, smart cars, mm -hmm. and if. If low those many years ago, 10 plus years ago, it was also a The Office. I'm going to guess that it would have been a The Office or a The 30 Rock, which is interesting because we really, yeah. we we strip mined 30 Rock for audio yeah. content. I mean, honestly, we were not, and we weren't good to the environment. We just went right mm -hmm. in there yeah. and just absolutely dynamited the entirety of that of, of that series. Um, so let me say one more thing here too, and I'm I'm sort of just realizing this. It also might not even be tape that was unprecedented on TBTL because I remember thinking, oh well, you guys used to you'd sort of pulled back on mm -hmm. making the montages. So I went back and like you say, strip mine. I strip mine some of the early days of TBTL and kind oh. of remixed uh, stuff or like took a cold open and then started adding drops. I mean, that's what I was bringing back was mm -hmm. the idea because you had gone away from uh -huh. having a montage at the top of the show. It was just like drop Dry open tape, acapella, and then music. Okay, I'm going to guess that it's something from 30 Rock. I'm going to say I am too. Rock. Okay, let's I'm going to guess it. that too. Here it is. This is intro number one. All right, Brandy, Heather, Channing. Oh, no. Wow. See, Ted? it's like, yes, head. <laughs> exactly. Like, I would never go for this. All right, Brandy, Heather, Channing, Brianna, Amber, Sabrina, Melody, Dakota, Sierra, Big. It's so bro -y. It's just like such bro -y tape to start with. All right, Brandy, Heather, Channing, Brianna, Amber, Sabrina, Melody, Dakota, Sierra, Bambi, Crystal, Samantha, Autumn, Ruby, Taylor, Tara, Tammy, Lauren, Charlene, Chantel, Courtney, Misty, Jenny, Krista, Mindy, Noel, Shelby, Trina, Reba, Cassandra, Nikki, Kelsey, Shauna, Jolene, Erling, Claudine, Savannah, Casey, Dolly, Kendra, Kali, Chloe, Devin, Emily, fucking Becky. Nope. Wait, was it any one of those names with a Lynn after it? Yes. Okay. Brandy Lynn, Heather Lynn, Chan Tammy Lynn. F T B T L. Dare we? Dare we? Just, I mean, I put down about 20, 30 pounds of beef at uh, one sitting, and uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. My dream is to sell around the world. Oh, catamaran. Okay. Sure. With two members of every cat race, and share my love with cats for all the humans to see around the world. Today, I am making this studio a, a no, no spin zone. embarrassment Oh, no zone. embarrassment zone. I met a guy yesterday, okay. seven oh, feet tall. Hey. I figured he had I to be in this. sport, but I... he wasn't in sport. That is totally absurd. Oh, that's totally Hawk Carroll? Why do you have to be mad? If you just sign up for a little yoga class, oh. you're signing up for a little demon class. That's Mark Driscoll. <laughs> Last uh -huh. time I heard that, I laughed so hard I fell off my dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, you know what, Andrew? I think I, I feel very good about the that audio. Yeah, I don't think I would use any Mark Wahlberg tape. There's something so broy about Ted. Like I don't. You I mean, I think another like, early one is him do, doing a bunch of like other words for beer and that yeah, same Bruce, exact rat Bruce Stoyovsky. Yeah, exactly. You're saying that the the show has evolved away from the deeply Catholic guy who wakes up at three in the morning to exercise. 
who uh, assaulted somebody in Boston oh, yeah. as a youth and I'm made leaving, him go I'm blind, I believe. The, the, yeah, exactly. So, um, well, I, okay, other than, other than the fact that we're sort of, we're not enchanted by Mark Wahlberg's work these days, per se. Um, other than that, I think that that's pretty, in fact, some of those are still in pretty heavy rotation. <laughs> yeah, they are. No, I haven't grown a lot. Let me just hear, I'm not going to do the whole thing. Let's just, do you want to take a guess at what number two would be? How far in do we have to go before we get to a 30 Rock? Oh, that's a great Great game. <laughs> we don't uh, have to listen to them all. What's Let me just the over the under? I'm saying four, <laughs> and I'm taking the under. And again, there's a missing number five. My guess is number five was something that I sent to you that you were just like, eh, maybe pull that one out of rotation. I probably deleted it. We'll never oh. know. Here's number two. Now, Greg, you have some interesting. Co- oh yeah, this we is- didn't. We do not use this. It was just random tape from an old game show where some kid like raps or something. Isn't that? And- wasn't that one of those? That that voice sounds very familiar. I believe that was a a guy who hosted a talk show. And I, Andrew, I know this sounds insane. Mm-hmm. I know this sounds insane. I think that person's name might have been Mark Wahlberg. Wait, there what? was, I believe, there was a show called the Mark Wahlberg Show that was in the era of like it was sort of like when it, you post Donahue kind of during the the time when they were launching a lot of those shows, there was a different Mark Wahlberg. There is something called the Mark Wahlberg and show, I but feel that, like this, that's not what this that's is. Not what this, this is, is. A, what you're hearing is a game show, and it sounds like the Walk, the Mark Wahlberg show or the Walk Marburg show mm-hmm. yep. um, was a talk show, right? Okay, so this is a kid who is rapping before he participates in the game show? Uh, yeah, you know, this you're is sure cringy. this wasn't a character on the Mark Wahlberg show who's <laughs> I'm like, sure. I'm on because I can rap. But I this mean, guy's you, voice sounds for all the world like Mark Wahlberg well, let, to me. Well, let's take a listen. I could be wrong. I mean, I definitely could be wrong. My memory. So that only aired from 1995 until 1996. But it made a real impression on me. Apparently, yeah. So I, I thought this was a game show, but you're right. I, I, I could be wrong about it. Let's take a listen. I do think it's cringy. I think this is one that did it. Number, after intro number two, I was already <laughs> feeling humiliated because <laughs> I feel like this, didn't, this, this one didn't go over so great. Now, Greg, you have some interesting career plans. Tell us about your career plans. Place. Yeah, I'd like to be either a stand-up comedian or a baseball manager. Stand-up comedian or a baseball manager. Oh, wait, tell me, so you want to be a stand-up comedian. Tell me, uh, what kind of jokes do you do? I tell knock-knock jokes. You tell mm. knock-knock jokes? Yeah. Would you guys like to hear a knock-knock joke by any chance? So it's not rap. Okay, Gregory. Lay one on us. Let's hear it. Knock-knock. <laughs> uh, Humpty. <laughs> they call me Humpty. With sitting with the donkey, I really am kind of funky. Greg, ladies and gentlemen. TV. What a weird decision to make that intro tape. <laughs> I love it because <laughs> I've done. I I did that in Las Vegas not that long ago. We were walking. It was um, Becca's brother's birthday, and we were walking along the strip, a bunch of us. And there was like a guy playing drums and had a microphone and stuff. It's a big thing on the strip these days. And he like started doing playing like the rhythm to the Humpty Dance, which is a song that Uh Jeff knows well and Scott knows well, Becca's brothers and I know well. And we were all kind of rapping, uh, and I was on the side rapping, and I was realizing how much I'd forgotten the words of the Humpty Dance. I could have very. I think I think you're right. That doesn't sound. That sounds like some kind of a game show where they're introducing the kid versus the Mark Wahlberg show. Game show. But um, but I am I am uh, relieved to know that I didn't hallucinate the fact that there were two Mark Wahlbergs operating in the pop culture space at the same time. Like the fact that there was already a Mark Wahlberg who was m- from the uh, Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch, mm-hmm. and then the second Mark Wahlberg was still able to get a television show is kind of amazing. You feel okay. like that could have been that could have that could have ruled him out. The reason I used that way back in the day was just because um, I, I think I was like, oh, this is fun. I, I can now make tape I thought it was TV funny, TL. by the way. And so I think I started going online and just like looking for random stuff that was sort of viral or something. And again, this is 2011. It was a long time ago. And I am now on YouTube. And this is a game show. There are three kids standing behind like, you know, little podiums, uh-huh. like kind of a, can a I, mini can version I also of search Jeopardy. For this to see if I recognize yeah, what look the up thing um, 
a great knock knock joke because I, I don't see anybody describing what the show is. It's uh, got well, great knock knock joke. I'm gonna need more more info. Great no, great knock knock joke. What I typed in to get there, I believe, was I typed in. You ready for this yes. game show yes. kid rap knock knock Perfect. Humpty? That's your key to the <laughs> game. Got game you show kid rap knock knock Humpty. <laughs> so um, oh, let's see rap, here. And now Reddit. Knock, somebody has written knock, this up on Reddit as the cringiest knock knock, knock joke over Aww. ever. Rather, I should say. Poor kid. Um, Hold on. I wonder been, how that it, kid's doing now. I mean, I absolutely see myself in this in this young person because uh, I uh, let's see, no thanks. Okay. Oh, it's Carmen San Diego. It's. I was just gonna say this looks for all the world like Carmen San Diego. The set it being Carmen San Diego. And I, apparently, this this kid, as an adult, twelve years ago, did a, a an AMA on Reddit. His name was Greg Gethard. What do you think mm. he said about about that? Like, I feel like it's pretty open and shut. He. He wanted to do the Humpty Dance. He wanted to rap the Humpty Dance. He got nervous because he's on television, which mm -hmm. he's probably never done before. And, um, and the rest is history. Like, how many A's were there? Hey, so what was happening? Well, I right. thought it'd be funny if it said, uh, knock, knock, Humpty, pronounce with an umpty, ladies, oh, how, how I love to funk thee, or whatever. Like, I feel like it's pretty, it's, 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 I don't know how long that conversation could be. Well, it's actually, I'm not going to read you his answers because this, well, well, maybe you want me to, but this I could do. go on way too long. But um, let's see here. Here are some of the questions. Okay. In your opinion, why didn't the crowd respond <laughs> to your get up out your seat gestures? Um, um, that was one question. Uh, what was his answer? Because his I was answer. absolutely brutalizing the lyricism of Shock G from... <laughs> Digital Underground? It looks like the answer is because the joke wasn't funny and it made no sense whatsoever. Some might describe my comedy is still in that vein. So it looks like he's being See, a little like self Again, I, I feel like where this really broke down for this kid, well, one was assuming that the studio attendees of the public television geography-related <laughs> show, based, I assume, on some kind of, like, um, what, floppy disk-based computer game? That because that, what that's what how Carmen yeah, San Diego right. started out right like yeah, it was I a very right. very old school computer game. People the were idea, playing it on their tandies, right? The idea that those kids in that room would have been like, oh, he did not, he's not doing the Humpty Dance. That they were going to like start just vibing to that was a pretty ambitious idea. But even if there was a small chance it was going to work as a joke he completely annihilated the lyrics, so it just became completely nonsensical. I don't think this is like, my humor was too abstract for these people. I think it was, I really, I really botched the, uh, the lyrics of the song. People are also asking, like, did you come up with that joke yourself? Did you t try it out on your parents or a sibling ahead of time? He's like, no. Before the show aired, they asked us what we wanted to do when we grew up. For some reason, I said either baseball manager or stand-up. They asked if I had a joke. Being that I was 12, I didn't. So their production assistant wrote that for me, and wow. that's what I performed. I tested it out on absolutely no one before I told it on the okay. air. That's fascinating. Oh, see, there's and there's more A's like there, this one. Why didn't you back up from the mic? Why, Greg? <laughs> I, you know what? I severely underestimated how many A's there were associated with this event. Now, so Andrew, we're two. We are now two intros in, and we have not yet heard. Oh a yeah, Thirty Rock. Can we hear intro number three, please? Intro number three. This is the one that is labeled as dash stupid, which okay. makes me think in the montage after, which we don't have to listen to. This is probably the one where I, I just like found a bunch of um, <laughs> YouTube videos that were montages of insults from movies like uh, Nerf Herder. What uh -huh. is the Star you Wars one? Fu fuzzy headed Nerf Herder. Nerf Herder. Yeah. And so anyway, this is probably that. Okay. But how does it begin right. is the question. Hey, caller. You sound pretty sexy. Give me the measures. Oh, you know what this is? is this this Kroll? is Kroll on, I want to say, um, Parks and Rec or some show oh, okay. where he plays like a really like kind of, is it literally kinda is douchey he, like, radio guy? In fact, his name might even be Douchey or something. Oh, sure. um, And so it was radio related. So I played it. I'm not going to play it now because okay. it's like, yeah. where is the line between sarcasm yes. and it just being gross? And again, that's why I don't play that anymore. Give me the Mejis. No, thank you. <laughs> Here's number four. Dennis. There it is. Hey! Uh, Jack sent me because he wants you on TGS. No I way. guess I lost. I took the under. You swore to me that you would never see me again, but this whole crazy on again, off again, Dennis listening, it just can't be stopped. No, we don't have a crazy thing. Yeah, we do. We're like Ross and Rachel, but just not gay. TV. 
<laughs> I, remember, I knew that there was some sort of joke like that in there somewhere. There you go. It only wow. took us four intros to get there by way of Carmen San Diego. Again, again, and Ted. Again, I lost because I took the under, and if it would have been three, then I would have won. But I guess four, I don't know. I guess four is, yeah, I said the over under is four. I'm taking the under. So if you were, oh, the, the over under was four. I couldn't if you, remember. If where you, you had the over at home, you uh, talk to DraftKings about that. You may be yeah, able to get them to honor that bet. Congratulations. Well, that was a lot of fun for me. That was a fun me, adventure anyway. for us. Maybe not Good so much ear. for the listeners. Good ear on you for um, realizing that that was the wrong little flourish we played, the acapella at the top of the I show. I would have been really proud if I had pulled a Mark Wahlberg on that, but I. I mean, the other other Mark Wahlberg, but it is oh. what it is. <laughs> I was like, don't I don't even know what context you mean, but please, nobody pull a Mark Wahlberg. No, it's probably not, not good. Um, all right. Let's thank a dazzling donor or two. And then uh, we'll continue uh, rolling on uh, with uh, with the show, including um, Andrew, because we just we can't dig deep enough into your life. Uh, the fact that you're going to Mexico with Vives. I'm, I am. I don't yeah. even know what I, I'm. I feel like we're growing apart. I don't even know what part of the nation of Mexico you're going to. And Neither do I'm, we. We're I'm on the lamb, Luke. We're I'm on the lamb. You're flying standby, and you just wrote mm -hmm. Mexico on a sign. <laughs> right, exactly. All right, I want to hear more about that after we thank these dazzlers. If you are looking for something to augment your TBTL listening with, I cannot recommend The Sporkful highly enough. You know about this show, right? Produced by friend of the show and friend of me, Dan Pashman. They like to say that it is a show for eaters, not for foodies. You don't have to know a lot about food. You just have to enjoy the experience of putting food in your mouth and chomping down on it and swallowing it. Um, <laughs> I'm very jealous of this other thing that Dan did a while ago. He invented a new kind of pasta. It's called cascatelli. I've bought it in the store and then made stuff with it. It's amazing. It's delicious. It's toothsome. It's all the things that Dan was trying to set out to do when he invented his own pasta. Uh, they talk about all kinds of interesting stuff on the Sporkful, like uh, why is the shallot super special? Is there such a thing as uh, halal pork? What kind of fast food should you eat on vacation? And stuff like that. Uh, we love Dan. You're going to love the Sporkful. Get it wherever you get your podcasts. We was hoping for some razzle-dazzle. Razzle-dazzle. That's right, man. Razzle dazzle. On your mark. On your mark. Get set. Get set. Now ready. Ready. Go. Everybody razzle. Hey, let's thank some dazzling donors. These are the incredible, generous, dazzling folks who are donating some dough to the program. And um, we got to start by thanking Kate Muller of uh, Seattle, uh, Washington. I guess. Yeah, Mueller. You call it the Mueller report, right? I got scared there for a moment. That it, like Mueller, and she does yeah. say it's like the Mueller report, yes. but no relation. But it took yeah. me a minute to remember that we were calling it the Mueller report. Right. Yeah. No, and I'm not with the you. Mueller report. Mueller. Anybody? Mueller. Mueller. This is Kate Mueller, mm -hmm. uh, who's in Seattle, Washington. I'm also doing some quick, uh, quick googling just to kind of um, confirm my suspicions, Andrew. Mm -hmm. uh, about uh, something that'll come up in Kate's message. Kate says, hi, Luke and Andrew. As in previous years, I'd like to use my dazzling donor message for some shameless self-promotion, if that's okay. It, it is. sure is, Kate. Please. Yes. My husband and I own the best small gym in Seattle, Green Lake Strength and Conditioning, and we would love for any tens to check us out. We welcome and celebrate all bodies, all people, and all abilities. And we have coaches who can meet everyone where they are fitness-wise. I am personally about the furthest thing from a gym bro, as you could imagine, and I want everyone to experience the community, acceptance, and fun that I found at our gym. Tens, please check us out at greenlakestrength.com. And uh, she says we are ready for that sweet, sweet TBTL bump. Nice. So go check out greenlakestrength.com. Dot com. I was on my phone doing a little um, walking around, you know, mm -hmm. as it were, the streets of Seattle, and I know yes. exactly where this is. This Me too. Is, this is, you know, right, it, basically kind of near where so much of my child. I mean, it's, on, it's over on the other side of Green Lake from where I actually grew up, but it is a part of town that I just spent uh, a massive amounts of time in. 
Mm -hmm. I believe there's a there used to be a big cycle shop around there too. It's a really nice part of Green Lake. I used to walk around it all the time. Are you telling when me I Greg's in the Green Lake cycle is gone? Oh, I don't know that it's gone. I just I wasn't sure because I haven't I just haven't been in that neighborhood in a little bit uh, myself. I'm, I feel like I used to be there all the time. I mean, not in my youth like you, but like I used to uh, walk from oh, my Roosevelt apartment I'm around Green Lake. Greg's is still there. Whew. Okay, good. God, you had Lee. You had Lee collapsing right Our <laughs> from Cascade Cycle Club. Um, you know, am what I else? right that they're in the same neighborhood? Yeah, like the absolutely. same like kind of corner of Green Lake there, sort of. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know what else? It's pretty close to. And I'm not saying you should. Um, go get your exercise on at uh, Green Lake Strength uh, a and Conditioning and then toddle over to the Little Red Hen. But I'm just saying yeah. they're not, these are not very far apart as far as exactly. like, you know, places go. And uh, maybe that's a, that could be a way to while away a spring afternoon. I love that you go to the gym and you're just yeah. like, I finally went to the gym. I, I was so good today. Let me just peek on over. I mean, mm -hmm. since I was so good, let me just peek on over at the I've head and it. see what's going on. Maybe get myself a little basket of chicken wings or mm -hmm. something. I actually mm -hmm. was once at the Little Red Hen on the same day that I think I had maybe done the um, Seattle Half Marathon. Oh, okay. And I think there was more than a couple people in there on that Sunday who still had their finishers, like, you know, shirts on. And I. Oh, yeah. So I was like, there's a precedent for people exercising and then going to the Little Red Hand. But that's not what this is an ad for. This, mm -mm. Is, a, this is an ad for Green Lake Strength and Conditioning. <laughs> yeah. It's also, by the way, a very beautiful um, uh, facility and building that they're in, too. Because, like again, I'm looking at it from the outside. I'm looking at Green Lake Strength and Conditioning and, like, very, very cool space as well. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, it sounds like uh, whatever your level of fitness, your body type, et cetera, your goals that uh, Green Lake Strength and Conditioning is for you. And I'm talking to you, Andrew, specifically. Yeah, no, I know. And also you're supporting uh, the, the TENS That's community it. and your your TENS brethren. And mm -hmm. it looks like Kate's got a little tag on her note here, too. Yes. Back to TBTL. Been a dedicated... Do you mind, Am I stepping on your toes here, Luke? No. Are you furious at me for just that jumping is a in union, on this message? That is a union violation. I, guess, okay. I don't know why I'm doing that. I just wasn't 100% sure that you saw that or if we had moved on. And so I wanted to get it in there. And That's then I realized, fine. oh, Honestly, I'm just stepping all no, no, over no, no, no. you I, I, I'm, I'm happy to let you share some of the share some of the workload, and it is a workload of, okay, of reading good. these messages. Well, then also, uh, it's time for uh, top stories. No, just joking. Uh -huh. um, the <laughs> I was just worried you weren't going to get to top stories. <laughs> the rest of Kate's messages. Back to TBTL. I've been a dedicated daily listener since Eli Sanders' 2008 wow. Stranger article. I honestly don't know what my daily life would be Aww. without TBTL. I love you guys. Power out, Kate. That's awesome. That's really There's awesome. two... Really, as I can think of it, about at least for many years, there were two um, sort of places from whence TBTL listeners came. It, le, other than the original OG radio listeners, mm -hmm. it was either the Eli Sanders piece in The Stranger or it was Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. Yes. For, for many years, anytime I asked them, oh, how did you hear about the show? I'd be like, I read an article on The Stranger that mentioned you. Or I kept hearing them say TBTL on Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. And one day, I was just bored and I was like, all right, what is that? And now here I am. I feel like there's a semi distant third or actually maybe not semi distant. I feel like there's a third place one and then a kind of a distant fourth. Do you know what third place is as far as early introduction to TBTL? Okay. This goes before my time and everything. Um, but this would be something that people, well, I guess a little bit the Bryant Park Project. I would put that at number four. I think your appearance on Pesca's show, Mike Pesca's show, The Gist brought a lot. I mean, I guess well, the gist that's didn't not exist. so early, though. Yeah, so I guess that's later. But I hear a lot of people really? say, yeah, that The Gist. And then also you were on um, Adam, um, I almost said McKay's podcast yes. uh, back when it was a fledgling, but not McKay, though. No. Who am I thinking of? Adam um, Duritz. Who's the famous podcaster? Uh, uh, bop, 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 bop. Okay, this this is really embarrassing. But the one famous uh, podcaster. Oh, Adam Carolla. Carolla, you're on Carolla's show. Way I back was, in the day I too. was up yeah, until yeah. I wasn't. That was one of those things where I think that uh, at the time, and I think this is this is a, a good life lesson. I remember I really wanted to do something notable enough that I could get on the show Loveline um, while Adam and Dr. Drew were hosting it because I just loved that show so so much. And I bet you a lot of our listeners who dig whatever this is probably also are familiar with mm -hmm. what Loveline was like. And I missed that window. I, but then I was able to get on, you know, live versions of Adam Krola's show. And then the very last time it came through town, I 
I remember having a little bit too much to drink backstage, I think, and just being a little kind of just off my game and being on stage at the Neptune and just flailing. I think just mm. not being particularly entertaining or I, I, maybe this is a little bit in my head, but what I know is I was never asked back again. Mm. And I think at the time I was like, I can't believe that I screwed that up. And then the, let's just say the tone and tenor of that show. Yeah. Right. Kind of, a lot it, has changed. It kind of, it, it kind of, you know, it, it moved off on its own course and it, it ended up being just fine that I wasn't, really part of that scene anymore i mean again i think that i think they fired me before i could fire them but <laughs> i was never here's what i was never faced with the tough decision of should i go on the corolla show with adam mm -hmm. and dennis prager oh you is know? it dennis prager is that still his no, oh yeah that's is their, that still uh, i mean i think that i uh, last i checked i think that they're still you know collabing on things mm -hmm. i mean it's just it's taken much of more of a kind of um i don't know maybe you could say conservative turn or whatever however you'd uh, however you would um, place that so i see even the corolla thing though i feel like those were the live shows i was never i never ranked uh, i never rated high enough to get on the like come down to the studio in la and sit around with me it was more mm -hmm. like we're gonna be in seattle is there someone who's willing to come to the theater on their own dime and sit on stage and keep the needle moving i think that was kind of where i was in the I didn't hierarchy. realize that because I've heard other people say oh, I, I heard you on Corolla. And again, I'm not make I don't want to make it sound like it was a huge flood, but I will hear that from time mm -hmm. to time. And I used to hear it more. I feel like when it was, you know, mm -hmm. more recent. Um, but I didn't re I thought that you ha I thought you did join the actual podcast like by phone or something. No. I just assumed that I didn't realize I never made. I never made. In fact, in fact, the first time I ever tried to get in contact with him, I had him on. Or sorry, I called into his L.A. radio show as I was driving to my NPR job. And I think I've told this story before, but I, 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 did the, I did the, I guess, classic mistake, which was they had been talking about some topic. I think this might have been when he had like Teresa Strasser was his, his, oh, yeah. his, his uh, you know, I guess you would say sidekick or whatever. And uh, I'm driving along and uh, I hear something and I think I have something to offer. And again, I'm very obsessed with this person in this radio show and I call and I get through probably bald Brian answers the phone and mm -hmm. pushes me through and I start by saying I'm trying to show off my radio acumen by saying I know you've kind of moved on but I wanted to like recontextualize mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. said something like I know you've moved on or I know you're on another topic but and then I just hear him go I just I can't remember if I got hung up on or muted but I just I think I got hung up on <laughs> and then I turned my radio up on the delay and I heard myself going I know you've already moved on, and then Kroll just going, I hate it when people call in and they want to talk about something that already happened. It's like, we've oh, moved no. on. Like, he just completely eviscerated me as a caller on the show. Um, that's so funny because, I mean, in a certain way, like, I know that you sort of love it when, like, that's kind of a... I do love like, it when Stern does that, although I yeah. also find it maddening. Yeah, exactly. And, like, I'm trying to think, there are, there are other shows that I don't, I don't hear, I don't listen to a lot of radio like that, but, like, I will even say one of the local sports shows I listen to, and sports radio in Seattle is so gentle it's just so gentle with its listeners and, and the what about the covering set as list well. <laughs> oh i don't know the set list what is that maybe that's i'm just a, that's something too... that rock star bob stelton does that was a joke about how tame oh, something called he... the set list is oh that might be if he still does that i just don't hear that particular segment but anyway um but even well, i don't mind a host being like kind of having a reputation for being a little cruel to uh -huh. listeners not cruel but like a little harsh or whatever uh -huh, little I, unless it, you know it can go a little bit too too far and then it's not fun but like i certainly think that it, it can be done well but man it must not be great to be on the other side of only that. because i was not just a kind of rando who kind of dialed in i was a person who had a multi-year parasocial relationship yeah with this right. person like and you had a show on a network you had a show not on yet npr oh you had a public radio job but not i NPR. think i was driving to my job as a booker okay although i could have I, you know I, I forget the exact time this happened but i could have been i could have been um at that point maybe a reporter because i went i ended up back in la at that mm. same facility for a brief period of time also the very first tbtl podcast only episode so we'd been fired mm. now i'm at my house Corolla called in like I asked him to some oh okay I don't Maybe know how that's what I'm thinking I think of. I might have and I might have leveraged our friend Bean for that information mm -hmm. or something because he had Corolla had become already a podcaster if I remember right uh some th this is my memory of things that I that somehow he gave us you know a certain 
I don't know what you would call it, legitimacy or something. Mm-hmm. So, anyway. and did you do? I'm, I think I remember this. Like, did oh, I don't remember from the time, but you telling me was it kind of like okay, well, I'm a podcaster now. Like, what advice do you have as Mr. Probably, Podcaster? Probably. You know? I mean, again, if I remember right, too. Like I'm at my house. Remember, this is the 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 house in Seattle where mm-hmm. uh, the broadcast is being held up by a stick. Mm-hmm. I'm rolling into Garage Man. This is only interesting to you. I don't even know mm-hmm. how I was making a phone call work. I think I have Sean and Jen there. But mm. today has really been a trip down TBTL memory lane for reasons yeah, I can't right. exactly can't exactly um, pinpoint. But the fact that even from a technical standpoint, this was even achievable is wild to me because I was both engineering it, hosting it. We were live. I think we might have been live streaming it on mm. Stickam. All this <laughs> stuff that's just like a lot of things for my little small egg brain to be trying to keep going at once. I'm sure it was a brutally bad interview, but the fact that it even happened is kind of tech from a technical standpoint, sort of surprising to me. I just remember that we have a deadline for today's show yes, because you have to be somewhere. And were you going to try to look middle, that up? No, we're in the middle of Dazzling Donors yeah, we and are. we have six minutes left on the clock. I don't know how this is going to work. Know. Maestro. Yes, now ready. No, no, we've got... Ready. Go. We have 16 minutes left on the clock. Oh, I miss. Okay, I, I texted. Thought, okay. I texted the fine folks that I've got to meet with, and I bought us five minutes. Oh, okay. You're oh, welcome, wow. listeners. Oh, well, then take your time. I'll go play <laughs> the longer version of the song. <laughs> Uh, we We're thank, looking for some razzle dazzle. We got to thank our second dazzling donor today, Sarah Settlemeyer, who's in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Uh, home of Jim Thorpe. I probably said that last year. I, I, and then I probably said the same. I, I, I think I do this every year, Andrew. Can you just handle the rest of the show without me? I think I think I yeah. What's going on? I think I'm making I think I'm making my yearly mistake of was of of confusing the Carlisle School and Carlisle, Pennsylvania. I think the Carlisle School was a school that Jim Thorpe and many other um, Native American. Uh, young people attended, but I don't know if it was in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And the thing that's confusing me he is he did go to he did go to school at Carlisle. I don't know if you've confirmed that. Um, Thank, you. Thank you. And now you want to know? Let's see, Carlisle Indian Industrial School is what it was called. Was it in at the Carlisle, time? Pennsylvania? Oh, you want to know where it is? Um, it's in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Okay, man. there Look we go. Look at that! Look at that! Gosh, because there's also a place called Carlisle's. It used to, I don't think it exists anymore. Tom. Uh, Douglas used to have a restaurant named Carlisle's, but it was spelled different because it was named for the singer Brandy Carlisle. Huh? Got a lot. So this is what I'm saying. There's just a lot going on in this yeah. in this head, uh, and uh, it all tends to get jumbled up. Thank God we have Sarah Settlemeyer helping fund the whole operation. Sarah Thank says, you, Sarah. hi, Luke and Andrew. TBTL has been a lifesaver through a very difficult health crisis affecting oh. my 11. Ah, oh, Sarah, I'm sorry. Jeez. Uh, Tim is the name of Sarah's 11. Uh, he had open heart surgery at the beginning of last December and experienced multiple complications that almost killed him twice. He's only 53. Um, thankfully, he is making a full recovery at home and listening to TBTL at night when I got home from the hospital gave me hope that everything would be okay. Mm-hmm. I have been a faithful listener since 2009 when I heard you on the Adam Carolla show. Um <laughs> That's weird. I when mean, I heard that, you on the gist, which would that, come out five years later. Now that is, that I did not expect that. I have been a faithful yeah. listener since 2009, and your show has been an important part of my life. Sometimes I look around at all the TBTL merch I have and at the amount of money I'm donating, and I wonder, am I in a cult? I don't, don't ask any questions, Sarah. <laughs> did you not hear yesterday's show? We're not allowed to say no, cult. There, there, Sarah. Don't, you know what? Don't trouble yourself with such <laughs> questions as how much money have I spent on this show? <laughs> yeah, never, never ask yourself that, please. <laughs> I wonder, am I in a cult? But only sometimes you guys have definitely helped me over a mountain and given me good luck. Oh, so, wow. Well, Sarah uh, and Tim... If you're hearing this, um, uh, Tim, we're really thinking of you and wishing you the best. And Sarah, same to you. And and uh, thanks for being a pal of the show and, and hope that uh, things are looking better in your home from a health standpoint. Um, and uh, no, it's not a cult. Hello and welcome to Top Story. Well, uh, remember last week, Andrew, when we were talking about the uh, Wendy's surge pricing? I do, sort of. (laughs) I mean, you know. Really? Um, Yeah, they they announced to their shareholders that they are going to start 
doing this thing where they, um, you know, they use AI apparently to to figure out the times of day when when people are maybe not coming to Wendy's and then send out a push notification. Well, first of all, just lower the prices of various things. Mm -hmm. One thing I thought was interesting about that was they I don't think we got to this when we talked about it, but they were talking about lowering the price of something by 25 cents. And they had done the math that that could increase their profit by $50 an hour, which I thought was a, I don't even know how you, how you actually guess at that. Like if we lower the the price of a, whatever they sell by 25 cents, that could be $50 an hour of additional profit, you know, per store. And they have a lot of stores. Yeah, I guess it adds up. Doesn't it seem like that number seems less impressive when you break it down like that, right? Yeah. Is that your point too? It doesn't sound like that much. No. And, and like they're redoing all the menu boards so that the menu boards will now reflect are more dynamic. Now the prices can, you know, go down. Now the the initial pushback on the story was, oh, they're going to like raise prices when it's hot out and everybody wants a frosty. And they were the Wendy's people were like, no, 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 no. This is we're only lowering prices with this. We're not raising prices. Um, so that and and actually I, I tend to believe them in that. Well, of course, because of the day and age we live in and because everything must be a contact sport. Uh, Burger King has, uh, has has decided to seize the opportunity to uh, basically make it very clear to their um, customers that they will absolutely never, ever use surge pricing. Uh, their CEO, uh, a guy named Tom Curtis, said, as the leader of this company, I will never support surge pricing. <laughs> Or charging people more when they're hungry. When our guests come to us, it's our opportunity to give them our very best in service and value for their hard-earned money. And then he added, these colors don't run. (laughs) He literally ended his statement to the New York Post, at Burger King, comma, you rule. Now, this seems like a bad idea to me because I honestly think... This is probably where a lot of this stuff will be going at some point. Y- you think he's making a mistake by yes. saying never? You never say never? Yes. I mean, like, you were also, I don't know if that was the same episode or not, where you were kind of talking about how you went into a Thai restaurant in your neighborhood that you like, but it's new ownership, and they were like, you got to order through your phone, and it just kind of wasn't mm-hmm. what you were looking for in that moment. I mean, I tend to think that pr- there will be a point, I don't know if we'll live to see it, but I would imagine that a lot of these restaurants will become a place that's highly automated and that is highly dynamic in terms of the pricing and the whatever. And you'll pull up to a place where there's probably very little, if any, indoor dining, and you just get your thing handed to you that a robot may or may not have produced. And that may, uh, you know, cost whatever it costs at that moment of the day. Like I can't, I I think it was, I think it was short sighted of the Burger King CEO to say, we will never use, this kind of dynamic pricing because they may, I mean, will he be held (laughs) responsible for that statement? I don't know. But I do think that he's, it's a little short sighted because I could see them wanting to use this in five years. It's almost like, uh, this is a, mm, this is an imperfect analogy, but I'm sort of thinking about the fact that when I go to the grocery store now, whichever grocery store it is, like I always punch in my number or usually it's Genevieve's uh-huh. number for the loyalty card program thing, which is like it maybe at one point that sort of seemed like a novel idea of, hey, you can save a little bit of money. But like now it's like a necessity. Oh, my God. Right. Like, I mean, because they jack the I don't even think it's like, hey, I'm getting savings. It's I'm getting ripped off if I don't use. Right. It. No, I'm I'm, you know, the number one question I have to the nice person working at the self checkout is, did it get my number? <laughs> is it in there? Because you don't get the little screen that says your number has been accepted. Sometimes I forget and then I put it in midway and then I'm that's when I'm deeply worried mm. that it doesn't retroactive. I mean, yeah. this is the simplest thing to ask a piece of software to do. But if I don't put my number in before I've scanned anything, mm. I remain deeply concerned that it won't understand that the stuff that there has been stuff that is already scanned. Oh, no, no, no. And I put mine in at the end and then it goes and then it like retroactively like highlights everything that, you that say feels risky to me. I don't know if it's, it's more no, know. it's satisfying. You don't know. I don't know if it's going to know about that. But I mean, the grocery store is another good example. You're right. Well, it's you like, know, I'm the risk taker in this <laughs> podcast. It's duo. down. I mean, it really is now at the grocery stores I go to. It's down to a person doing like regular checkout. Mm-hmm. And for as much as I rail against self checkout and as annoying as I find it, and the fact that we're now doing something that used to be a, a job someone did that was built into the cost of the stuff, they've 
they, they've won. They've beaten me. I now just instinctively go to the self-checkout line mm -hmm. because, first of all, I don't buy a ton of groceries at any one time because it's pretty much just me. And then number two, it's just there aren't, there are just no, there's one l potential human to help you at a regular checkout and there's like seven people in their 70s that are waiting for that. And I'm a young person in my late 40s, so I just mm -hmm. end up going to self-checkout. But all this stuff is changing and evolving and I feel like, you know, these restaurants, these Burger Kings, these Buru Rays, and these Wendy's and such are going to look really different in five years than they do even now. And uh, again, I guess the problem with my theory here is that anyone except me will ever remember that the Burger King CEO said this. <laughs> Yeah, right. Like exactly. Gonna pull up Whether or not he's even still the CEO when this huge shift happens. Will too, the yeah. Burger King, the actual king, will his bloodless coup have been successful? <laughs> that, no, Where no, he, that's and the, the he and the subservient chicken. <laughs> you remember subservient chicken, right? Only through you. Only through you. I love the idea of like one day the CEO of Burger King, the human CEO, is just in his office doing his thing. Mm hmm. Um, giving re reports to give, releasing press releases to the New York Post about how they'll never do surge pricing, and just the king walks in in the mm -hmm. full outfit, and he's like, "Oh, I, do we have a two o'clock? I didn't have that." And the king wordlessly just steps to the side, and behind him is the subservient chicken, <laughs> who's just holding a club <laughs> and just shuts the door behind him. That's a very, very dark way to end the show. You know who um, directed those, er like when they brought back the actual king as we think of him today in that sort of like kind of creepy mascot outfit. Do you remember who directed those earliest Burger King commercials with that version of the king? I'm going to uh -uh. put this about 20 years ago, no. maybe 25 years ago. Your old poker buddy, Ruben Fleischer. <gasps> oh, Ruben, Ruben Fleischer. Do I have that name right? Yeah, yeah Ruben, Ruben Fleischer. Fleischer. Because before From I Zombie Land, before I knew you, um, and the, one of my earliest experiences on the internet was I was obs and I have no idea how I landed there, but I, this is the early. This is well, not the early days of the internet. The early days of the internet for me, it's like 2001, and I get the internet, and I spend mm. all my time on RubenFleischer.com, watching all of his music <laughs> videos. He did things with Jurassic Five, and uh -huh. he made all these really cool commercials and I was just obsessed and then years later I met you and you're like oh yeah I used to play poker with him every Friday or something he lived like upstairs that. he lived in the upstairs apartment of my buddy Kevin Arnovitz mm -hmm. and uh and and I, I feel like I remember him he used to do stuff with Jackass too which I was obviously oh, really? impressed by uh. I think he's friends with those guys he used to do this thing the gumball 5000 or something but I just remember I I have a memory and it could be implanted but it was like, he was like, oh, yeah, I'm working on this movie or I'm, I'm directing this movie. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And he goes, yeah, it's, uh, it's coming out in whatever. It's Zombie Land, <laughs> which uh -huh. ended up being a pretty big film, pretty big film franchise. And that's I was right. like, you'll be moving. I assume you'll be moving out of the upstairs apartment fairly soon. <laughs> now that you're directing so. Woody Harrelson et al. in a big, big hit movie like Zombieland. I know we got to get out of here, but I'm going to jam this in at the end. It's what I started saying at the very, very beginning of the show is you did something in your intro, which is you were singing that Burger King song, um, which oh, kind of yeah. went viral itself about a year ago. But it's actually I didn't I didn't realize this until an ATM listener pointed out that it was actually an old commercial from the, the 70s, an oh. old jingle from the 70s. I didn't I'll know play that. it. I'll play it at the end of the show. And then there was a great like revisit of it in the uh, in the 90s where a bunch of office people were trying to remember the lyrics. And it's actually really funny. But wait, is the um, is the is the like the well, whole here, I'll song? Play it. Is... But here I'll, I'll play it for you. But also I do want I still want to make my point on this before okay. we get out of here. Have it your way, have it your way, have it your way at Burger King. So it's a little bit different, yeah. but you hear the roots of it though. Right. Yeah, because what I was wondering is because it was so in the the one that I think of is so intentionally idiotic, like. Bacon, 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 mm -hmm. bacon, bacon, you know, whatever. I was wondering, were they doing that in the 70s? But but not exactly. They were doing something Whopper, closer. Whopper, yeah, that one. Whopper, Junior, yeah, but it's like, you know, like the kind of the chorus is the same. Yeah. Uh, at the very end, after we say goodbye, I'll play for you this one from the 90s, which is actually really funny. It's from 96, a bunch of office workers trying to remember the commercials. Hmm. Um, but uh, what I wanted to say was the end of that song, as we know it in 2024, is he says, you rule. Mm -hmm. And 
I get that stuck in my head, oh, but yeah. I always yell, you fools. <gasps> like, I somehow combine, like, wow. like um, what was the bad guy in G.I. Joe? Like, oh, Cobra Commander, or Destro? Cobra Commander, or whatever. Say, you fools! And, for, and I'm not even trying to be funny. My brain just changes it to, you fools! And then you did that in your intro today. Do you have the same sort of earworm? Or were I you just making just, a joke? I thought I was just trying to be clever. I actually wrote that on the on the show sheet uh. um, when we had originally planned on talking about this story and I had literally wrote dot 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 you fools and then I thought uh -huh. that's not a very good joke and then when I started doing I just got into a flow state when I was yeah, doing right. the intro and then I yelled you fools you but, fool yeah anyway thank right. you for letting me talk a mile a minute to get that really really important content in at the end of the show but um, it felt full circle to me it, it did I also didn't even get to talk about my I was trying to show off my doctor's brush picks to you today Oh, those are the little... And we didn't even talk about you going to Mexico. Yeah, I should say, I'm going to be out of here. You're taking care of the show for a few the days, two and days. I'm going to be out of here. We're going to... How do you say? Puerto Vallarta. Puerto Vita. Vallarta. There's a place there called Zona Romantico, or Zona Romantica <laughs> that our friends what? were telling us about. And Genevieve's like, sounds nice, but I'm going with Andrew. Is there a Zona Frendo that we can <laughs> oh, go no. to? Yeah. I, was, I, I heard you were putting it down at Secret. <laughs> no, we're not going to secrets this time. All right. Well, I'll look yeah. for uh, when you're back on Monday. I'll, I'll look forward to a full report from how Mexico is. You have fun and be safe Thank you. down there. Come back. Good luck in one with the piece. show. Thank you. you got this. Me? You got I this? don't know. I don't know. Don't. <laughs> I have don't no idea what I'm doing tomorrow. <laughs> I want to have a job when I come back. We'll figure it out. Okay. Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, I will be back here tomorrow with more imaginary radio for you. In the meantime, have a great Wednesday. Take care of yourselves, and please remember, no mountain too tall. And good luck to all. Remember that Burger King song? Hold the pickles, hold the letters, crying babies won't upset us. Crying babies? No, 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 no. It's hold the pickles, hold the lettuce, hold the ketchup, hold the lettuce. No, 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 no. It's vegetables are out to get it. Even if you now just met us. One thing's for sure. Your Whopper is always made your way. Just 99 cents every day. In the hallway. The Whopper, always 99 cents at Burger King. All we ask is that you let us serve it your way. No. no. Hey, hey, guys, that's it. Power out.